Good morning, and welcome to the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. We pray that you and all are in good health. We ask that you all present respect the guidelines for COVID-19, maintaining a social distance of two meters and using hand sanitizers. At the time of Holy Communion, we will give you further instructions. At the end of Mass, we ask you to exit through the main doors at the back of the church. Our presider today is Father Cecil Critch, and our entrance chant is, God the Spirit, Guide and Guardian. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. Today we celebrate the feast day of St. Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Jesuit order. And we know that St. Uh, Ignatius of Loyola was born in Spain, and he was a soldier in the Spanish army, and he was injured in a battle. <coughs> he had a really bad leg injury in a battle. And of course, when he was recovering, the only books available were the lives of the saints and the Bible. So he started reading it. It changed his life. He, he was a major conversion in his life. So he went up to Montserrat, the great, up in the air, northern area of Spain, up north of Barcelona, uh, the shrine there of the Black Madonna is there now. And uh, he laid down his sword, and then he w went to Manresa, and he started to work for the poor and all that. And, helped the poor out, and then he, he sort of started working on his uh, sp uh, spiritual exercises, which had been a part of the Jesuit order. So we, put, so we got together with St. Francis Xavier and with uh, the University of Paris, uh, St. Francis Xavier and other people, and formed the Jesuit order. And of course, our current Pope Francis is a Jesuit as well. So we, we pray through his intercession today. And to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries today, we ask the Lord to come into our hearts and to forgive us for the times we have failed to live up to our calling, when we have failed uh, to follow the path and the will of God in our lives every day. We ask the Lord's forgiveness. Yeah. 
may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who raised up St. Ignatius of Loyola in your church to further the greater glory of your name, grant that by his help we may imitate him in fighting the good fight on earth and merit to receive with him a crown in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. At the beginning of the reign of King Jehoiakim, son of Josiah of Judah, this word came from the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Stand in the court of the Lord's house and speak to the cities of Judah that come to worship in the house of the Lord. Speak to them of all the words that I commanded you. Do not hold back a word. It may be that they will listen, all of them, and will turn from their evil way that I may change my mind about the disaster that I intend to bring on them because of their evil doings. You shall say to them, Thus says the Lord, if you will not listen to me to walk in my law that I have set before you and to heed the words of my servants, the prophets, whom I send to you urgently, though you have not heeded, then I will make this house like Shiloh and I will make this city a curse for all the nations of the earth. The priests and the prophets and all the people heard Jeremiah speaking these words in the house of the Lord. And when Jeremiah had finished speaking all that the Lord had commanded him to speak to all the people, then the priests and the prophets and all the people laid hold of him, saying, You shall die. Why have you prophesied in the name of the Lord, saying, This house shall be like Shiloh, and this city shall be desolate without inhabitant? And all the people gathered around Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsory of Psalm is 145. Yo 
seeking hearts will revive. For the Lord listens to the needy and does not spurn his servants in their chains. Let the heavens and earth give him praise, the sea and all its living creatures. In your great love answer me, O God. Hallelujah. Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus came to his hometown and began to teach the people in their synagogue so that they were astounded and said, where did this man get this wisdom and these deeds of power? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? Are not his brothers James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And are not all his sisters with us? Where then did this man get all this? They took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their own country and in their own house. And Jesus did not do many deeds of power there because of their unbelief. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus had spent the best part of 30 years in Nazareth. It's not a big place. And during that time, everyone knew he was, him as a carpenter, the son of Mary. And however, after he left Nazareth, Jesus' life took a new direction. It had thrown him into a ministry and minist- mission and that God had given him to do. He had left Nazareth as a carpenter, and this morning's gospel, he returns to Nazareth as a teacher and a healer. And people had been talking about him all around the countryside. It seems to have been Jesus' very ordinariness that made it difficult for the people of Nazareth to see him as he really was in all of his mystery. God was powerfully present to them in and through someone who was in many respects like themselves, as ordinary as themselves. God continues to come to us today in and through the ordinary, in and through those who are most familiar to us, It is the ordinary that is filled with God's presence. Look at Jesus, born in a manger, revealed to simple local shepherds. God's beauty shone on that simple, poor, and ordinary setting, totally unexpected for the coming of a Messiah, the King of Israel. The people of Jesus' hometown of Nazareth recognized the wisdom which Jesus spoke and the life-giving power that were at work through his actions, but His familiarity to them closed them off from seeing him, any different from themselves. So they were closed to the revelation of God's presence in and through someone who was just like them. So the people of Nazareth were unable to recognize the Word in the flesh, one of their own. So we are being powerfully reminded that that God is often wisely and powerfully present in us in our everyday actions, in our everyday events that we meet, and the people we meet every day. Because we can be tempted to look for God like many people in the extraordinary, in the unusual phenomena, like miracles and all of that. The mystery of the Incarnation proclaims that God in Christ is touching our lives in and through our day-to-day experiences of life. 
And today we celebrate the feast of St. Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Jesuits, and St. Ignatius' great gift to the church and to the world is what's called the spiritual exercises, which many people have done. Uh, the basic thrust of these exercises is to make us more aware of God's activity in the world and to be more responsive to what God is calling us to do and who we are to become. At the core of Ignatian spirituality is the idea of finding God in all things. And that certainly relates to this particular gospel. Finding God in the everyday events of our lives, in the everyday people. What this implies is that even the most mundane and ordinary of things can be infused with the presence and activity of God. So today as we celebrate the Feast of St. Ignatius of Loyola, let us seek to find God in the ordinary moments of our lives, in the routine chores that we do, in the relationships that we have. And we offer our prayers now of intercession today. For Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Archbishop Peter, and all of our church leaders as they lead and guide our church through difficult times, we pray to the Lord. We pray for the Society of Jesus, the Jesuits, our Holy Father. We pray for our local Jesuit community and the Jesuits work here at St. Bonaventure's College and all the work throughout our country and our world. Blessings on the Jesuits this day, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray that local and national and global leaders may find ways of healing the wounds of racial discrimination and all kinds of actions that violate human dignity, like traffic, human trafficking and all of that. We pray to the Lord. We pray today for our indigenous peoples. We pray to the Lord. For the blessing and strength for all the sick that the healing power of the Holy Spirit may be upon them, especially those awaiting surgery, dealing with life-threatening illnesses, we pray to the Lord. We pray today for all who have died. We pray especially for Sister Bride Power. We pray to the Lord. For your own intention today in the quiet of your hearts. We pray to the Lord. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the graces and blessings you give us every day. We make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, O Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his holy church. Let us pray. May these offerings we make to you as we celebrate St. Ignatius be pleasing, Lord God, and grant that the sacred mysteries which you have made the fount of all holiness may sanctify us too in the truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Ignatius of Loyola, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed Apostle, St. Ignatius of Loyola, St. John the Baptist, and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs with them to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. pray with confidence to our Heavenly Father in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming again of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, I said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And we share the peace of Christ now with one another. God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my, under my roof, but only say the word, word and my and soul, soul shall, shall be, healed. be healed. An act of spiritual communion. A prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Now that we are at alert level two, we are able to have public worship and the reception of Holy Communion at Mass. However, we must take special precautions to ensure that the reception of Holy Communion takes place in a safe and prudent, as well as respectful way. Please stay in your seat until the usher guides you. The instructions of the usher and social distancing of two meters must be observed by everyone wishing to come forward for Holy Communion. The person distributing Holy Communion will wear a face mask and will sanitize his or her hands before distributing Holy Communion. Instead of the individual attestation amen by communicants at the time of receiving Holy Communion, there will be one general attestation for everyone before the distribution begins. As communicants approach the front of the communion line, they will sanitize their hands, bow towards the host, in silence receive the host in their hands, move to the side to consume the host, and then return to their pew as directed by the ushers. Any person who cannot receive Holy Communion in the hand can receive a blessing. The body of Christ. Amen. Our communion hymn is Bread for the World.
Let us pray. May the sacrifice of praise that we have offered with thanksgiving to, in honor of St. Ignatius of Loyola, O Lord, bring us to exalt your majesty without end through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our prayer to Mary for help and protection during the pandemic. O Mary, Amen. you always shine in our path as a sign, sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust we ourselves to you, help, help of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping Keep your faith, faith firm. You salvation, salvation of your people know what we need, and we are sure you will provide, so that is in Cana of Galilee. We may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father, and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Under your protection, we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to thank Donna Marie here and um, Maureen and Sharon and Sister Lois for playing today and for our ushers who are very faithful every day to keep us safe. So I'd like to thank all of you for your presence here today. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And Almighty God bless all of us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go now in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. Our missioning hymn is Lift High the Cross. Oh, 